Hey, it's Seafree Eater. How's it going? Last time we talked about the old school miniatures group on Facebook and the painting challenge. If you remember, I was sent these two Max Mentalist uh, wizard miniatures to paint for the challenge for this January 2017. So, how does one get started painting, though? Obviously, I know something about it. But let's say you're just getting started. What would you need? First off, you'll need paint. You can get these craft paints at stores like Michael's or Walmart, but they don't do a good job. They are cheap, though. It's better to use these types of paints that are designed for painting models. Some good brands are Vallejo, Games Workshop, or Citadel, and other brands such as Reaper or Army Painter. These have better quality colors and they don't require as many coats. You need one or more brushes. You can get a really nice set of brushes from Army Painter for a really good price than you'd get anywhere else, but you can also just get a small brush from an art store. They're still pretty expensive, they're around $6 each or so. You also want an old brush or something a little larger. You can use this on larger areas, but it's really useful for applying glue, dry brushing, and doing little things with the terrain. Primer. Of course you need to prime stuff before you paint it. I didn't know that when I was a really young kid. Um, but it's a good idea, or your paint will be chipping off all over the place. I like to use this weird kind of like house paint primer, but you can also get primer from these craft paints or from these actual model paint companies too. This tends to work for me. Generally there are two types of primer people talk about, black or white. I like white better because the brighter colors will show up easier and you don't need as many coats. Black can be cool because it'll fill in all the little crevices you have here with black. But I think it can look cheesy at times, and I'd rather just use an ink, or what they call a wash. We'll get into that later. Varnish! You need varnish to protect the stuff you painted. You can get matte, satin, or gloss. I like matte because generally you don't want to really have a little shiny man, unless he's like a toad or something. Uh, yeah, so matte. You can also get varnish from a lot of these paint companies, but the stuff works pretty well and I think it's a little cheaper. I don't like the brush on stuff, I think it's easier to just spray it. Finally, you need somewhere to put the paint when you're painting, and somewhere to put the water. I like these little cups that are from uh, fruit cups, but you can go more professional if that's something you desire. Probably gotta clean these out at some point. Oh, well, that's it, right? That's all you need. Pfft, wrong. You need a way to clean the miniature, so you're gonna need a hobby knife in addition to soap and a place to wash it off. They put a kind of compound on there so they can get the miniature out of the mold. And this often, in addition to leaving a kind of residue on there that's somewhat unnoticeable but will be an issue, there are also gonna be mold lines that you're gonna wanna cut off. They're pretty prominent and easy to see. But just do a quick once over and you know you probably get most of them. You can also use sandpaper. The hobby knife is also useful if you need to do any sort of little modifications with the miniature. Now you're gonna need a base for your miniature. You can buy some expensive stuff from Games Workshop and other companies, but I just like using a washer. Generally a one inch washer is good and I'm not talking about the hole here. I want the hole to be as small as possible. You can go to any hardware store and get a washer, and they're pretty cheap. You can get a whole box of them online. You just want to glue the mini on there, but I generally will uh, prime the base, put it on some kind of paper. The paper will end up on the top, and then I'll reprime it. Then I can glue the miniature on top, and it's all ready to go. We'll talk about that later when I get into the basic. Here's some bases that are ready to go. Now to apply the miniature to the base, or if it comes in multiple parts like some larger models will, you're going to need super glue. 
I like this Loctite gel control. You can get this at a lot of places and it'll run about two to three bucks. Some people like stuff called Zappa Gap, but I think this works really well. It's also a good idea to have some white glue. You can use white glue for basic purposes. You can use it to create some effects such as dripping saliva or pools of ichor. And it's generally just a good thing to have. You also might want to have this stuff that they call green stuff. Green stuff is actually a type of epoxy. A lot of sculptors used to use this to sculpt the miniatures. It's kind of like sculpting with chewing gum, so it's not a lot of fun. I've tried it before. You can use it to do modifications to your miniatures, but you can also use it for basing purposes. If you need to sculpt, like, a small platform that he's standing on or something. Green stuff has these two parts, and you mix them together. It'll turn to a different type of green. I'm probably not going to use this with this miniature, but if I do, we'll get into that. It can be a little expensive to use, now I don't think it's necessary to have. Finally, you're going to need some other basing materials. This can include flocking, or what they call static grass. This looks nice to add some foliage to the base. You also want to have something to put that foliage on. I usually use sand. You can also use gravel to make little rocks for the base. Alright, well now there's all this crap all over the place. I guess it's time to get started. Next time, we'll start priming and preparing this miniature for painting. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And we'll see you next time. Have a good one. See ya.